Um, so I, I'd say that I spent 12 years as an, as an addict and for 11 years and 11 months I was in complete denial that I was an addict. I always knew that I had a problem but I would never label it as an addiction level because firstly gambling addiction is the most easily hidden addiction there is. There's no physical symptoms of it so no one, no one would know. It would only be me that know. And it was also justified by the, the adverts and I, I was getting VIP treatment from bookmakers so I had in my head would a betting company treat me as a VIP if I was a vulnerable addict of course they wouldn't but they did and I didn't know that at the time so yeah sense of denial about it and it's a very secretive addiction um, as well and there's and another thing it's there's there's nowhere to go for support well there wasn't anywhere to go for support or treatment so there's no uh a motivation for you to try and convince yourself you're an addict because you didn't know where to go with it. Um, so with, you say there weren't, there were very little services and help you could get, how did you climb out of that um, dark place? How did you um, deal with your addiction? So it, it came from a place of rock bottom, really. Um, that was, getting to that point was a trigger for me to understand that this couldn't go on for any longer because it it was starting to affect my mental health really bad. It was, it was also starting to affect other people and I was losing friendships, losing trust with my family. And with that, um, I realised that it's an inherently selfish thing to do. And I didn't get any uh, treatment, didn't get any support. I used practical tools like Gamban, um, which blocks all gambling software. Um, and I also uh, self-excluded from all my local bookmakers and casinos. And then from then on, it was just a case of constantly reminding myself of the negative consequences of my addiction. And then I created the big step, which gave me a real focus and purpose around trying to prevent other people going through the same thing that I did. Mm -hmm. And with your lowest point, can you talk more, do you mind talking more about um, what that was like and sort of where you were with your friends and your family? Were they, were your friends trying to help and you were sort of pushing them away or was the did they know what? you were addicted i think um none of them are naive enough to think that i didn't have a, a serious problem but i don't think any of them really got the severity of the mental health side of it a lot of them just thought that the pressures i were under were debt related and money related, is not actually to do with mental health and um yeah that the rock bottom came from the fact that i couldn't pay debt to family and to friends and friends were turning their back and when that starts to happen you realize that yeah you have to you've got to prioritize other people it's not fair on them and they they wanted to help but they didn't know what to say and they didn't know what to do and that's why there has to be i think support and treatment for other people affected by somebody else's gambling as well and i know you said earlier that uh, the money's not important but do you know a sort of a ballpark figure of how much debt you were in and sort of how much you were on uh, so I estimate that I lost £100,000 over 12 years gambling um, and, I f and most of that I finished with in debt that I'm still paying off now and I'm two years without gambling so it just shows you how deep it can get when you when you uh, gamble to excess and borrow but my, my main gripe with it all, the financial gripe, is the fact that not at any point did the betting company ask me where this money was coming from and it was never my own money and had that happened earlier, someone intervened earlier, then I wouldn't be in the mountains of debt that I'm still in now.